transform into you. Damn it. Hello everyone, I'm Replay Ty Heretic, and welcome back to Paper Mario. Where we last left off, we finished the sixth chapter in an hour of power and got the sixth star spirit. Who does something I can't remember. Can you have... I can't remember. Um River, chill out, smooch. Um <laughs> I can't remember for the life of me. Okay. Anyways. We have uh, the sneaky parasol from the uh, from the last um, recording, or from the last uh, chapter in a mission. And what that does is, whenever we're near someone, we can press B and transform into them. It's a good idea to have this because it allows you to transform into anyone you want. And as you see, there's a lot of you know not doing anything. We're gonna put our jam and jelly in the uh, in the box. If there's one thing I'm kind of ticked off about is there the game's grammatically correct in every sense, except for like the last, except for the chest. It tells you you put in something, but the main issue is is that it doesn't. I can't remember. I think I have to press B on the guards that are talking to each other. I'm gonna test something. Hopefully I can do this. Okay. Good, I can. If you want to change back, then you press B. That's what I remember. You can't do anything with A, and I, you can't even press the star button, which is kind of funny. Anyways, uh... I don't remember this chapter at all. <laughs> I don't. Holy crap! I'm drawing a blank! I'm drawing a complete blank! Oh, yeah, now I remember. Okay. Sorry, I. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've actually recorded an episode of Paper Mario. <laughs> About a week! Yeah, yeah, that's a long time. It's last... Actually, I... Actually, I recorded, um... Actually, I recorded Paper Mario... Um... I recorded Paper Mario... About... Uh... The... But, like, before the 28th of December. And then I had those episodes rendered out on the 3rd and uploaded them on the 4th. Uh, let's see here. It looks like this. Probably giving off somewhere. Okay, there's what we need. Uh, at least I remember. Also, if there's one thing in peculiar that I do like about this game, it's the fact that um, there's lighting effects in this game. Believe it or not, there's actually lighting effects. Yeah, it, they're very, they're not very noticeable, but with every character you see, including my character, for example, like this character along with Twink, who somehow is not getting noticed by the guards. Like, I guess it's like the amnesia monsters or something. It's just like, they notice you, but then they don't. Anyways, the, um... The lighting effects are more noticeable in levels that are based off of a single level of lighting, but in levels like this, as you see, there's, like, basic lighting in this, which is a very nice touch, and I do like little aesthetics like that. Anyway, here's our other guy. We press B to return to our original state. And then we press B on this guy to become him. And there's a few things around here that you can collect, but not that you can get as Peach. Um, there is a hidden block in this area, as I do remember. So I wanted to just think about something uh, as a basic, kind of as a thing I can do during Let's Plays, and it's kind of talking about just a single subject of the matter. Like a single subject that matters in this time, which right now it's the 9th of uh, January. And I do have one subject to actually talk about, and um, it's the... It's, if it's anything, 
if it's it, I, I wish I could explain it, but if anything, like the most difficult subject to talk about that I want to talk about is actually the um it's actually the uh, gun control. And I, I know you're hearing a lot about this and everything, but gun control is a really touchy subject considering that there's been a lot of shootings. Uh, recently there's been, a, I think, two or three shootings recently, and there's always gun deaths everywhere, and it's a really touchy subject to even talk about. But it's just a kind of a, su it's kind of a subject that we have to talk about, otherwise we're going to be making the same mistakes over and over again. It's like war. Oh no, my cover has been blown. You'd honestly think with Kami Koopa she would have had um she would have had the ability to, you know, teleport. Also, I think the reason why I don't remember the star power is because we don't even we didn't even learn it yet. Um this is Clevar. He's a, he's kind of like a uh, very, uh, he's a very intellectual per he's a very intellectual star spirit. He is, um, he speaks in very, uh, direct, but still, uh, co but still unique ways to speak. Anyways, he will give us the ability, I don't remember, but he makes our star energy go up to six. Time out, that's what it is. Okay, time out, you can stop time which means that any enemies that you're fighting will not be able to move at all. It's kind of like, I'd, I'd say maybe bullet time, per se, but except that this is like completely freezing time. It's like if a time gear was taken, then time would freeze in the area around it. Actually, that's a good analogy. That's kind of correct. Okay, let's see here. And up he goes to uh, Starhaven. Uh, because he referenced Flyerfield's beautiful again. Blah, blah blah Worth living so long to be a man of your stature. <laughs> you you look bored when you're saying this. Don't be looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, buddy. Uh, go back to Toe Town. Okay, so we're returning to Toe Town. Uh, let's see here. Now, there is one matter that we do need to cover next, and it is the, uh, and it is covering Toad Town sewers, which is what we'll be covering next. We have new badges here. We have Mega Quake, which severely damages all enemies on the ground, or ceiling. Um, I don't know if Mega Quake is better than, um, the current Quake that we have. Oh wait, we have Mega Smash, so Mega Quake would attack everything but air. So, I'm gonna take Mega Quake. You gotta take with what you can- you gotta take with what you can use properly. Uh, let's see here. I can take off Super Jump now, because we don't need that anymore. Let's see here. I can implement it into Deep Focus. All or Nothing is helping. Kind of. Um... Uh, let's see here. Gotta think of what to use. Hmm. There's a couple of badges that I want to experiment with. But, uh, for now, I'll put on group focus. It's really weird. Even after I have 30 BP, I still don't have enough. <laughs> I still don't have enough BP to actually properly manage everything. Uh, so we have 25 HP and 20 FP. Uh, there are some things that we still need to do in Toad Town that I know that people want me to s people want to see me do. Uh, we still have the dojo to deal with, but for now we actually have um, we have some items that I want to mix. I think no, I don't. Um, so I guess first off we will go to uh, Merlone's house and let me start four pieces. Okay, we have enough to get Zap Tap. That's good. Zap Tap is a very powerful badge, I will admit. Oh yeah, look at this, um, what are they called again? Jesus. I can't remember anything. 
Uh, so this person... Oh, ninja eyes, right. Sorry. Uh, they come from Starborn Valley, and then they're in the Shiver region, which is a chill place far to the north at the very end of the Earth. Merle, who hails from there, said that he had something important to tell us. Uh, Merle is... Or, I should call him Merrill. I, sh I guess Merrill sounds better. Uh, so... Okay, so the way that we get to sh uh, we Yeah, see, uh, is a pipe connected to Shiver City. Uh, Shiver City, uh, the Shiver City link is actually uh, in Toad Town Sewers, which is where we need to go. It's also where our final key item of the game is. You know that we have the Ultra Hammer, but we still have our Super Boots from, like, four chapters ago. Our Super Boots are kind of getting worn and kind of getting hard to use now. So we're going to go obtain our Ultra Boots from a completely awkward place. It's a really awkward placement for a game of this stature. It's kind of odd, but, uh, oh well. It's nothing that we can't manage as, uh, as we go along. Uh, let's see here. Gonna go on. Gonna go down into the Toad Town sewers. Now then, with all of our partners and everything, we will be able to obtain all the stuff that we need. So, down here we have, uh, a link to, uh, Boo's Mansion, which is where we will need to get a couple of life shrooms in the future. Right. Right. Forgot about this. So this is a uh, super blooper. He has 70 HP, and he is a fairly difficult enemy if you don't do everything right. <sighs> Might as well try using timeout on this guy. I probably made a big mistake. I'm not exactly thinking properly. I probably should have saved at the beginning of Toe Town, but uh, yeah, I'm not making mistakes now. Yep, yep, he can't move for three turns, which is enough for us to do some damage. Okay, I'm gonna boost Mario's defense. There we go. Getting water block increases our defense by one. Then we will use our power bounce. There we go. We will use... Eh, I'll try Tidal Wave again. <laughs> okay, that was terrible. Big mistake. Okay. Return back to Mario. And then... We want to prevent him from dealing damage, because he actually does a lot of damage. Uh, I could try a lullaby. Uh, hmm. There you go. Seven damage. Okay, he bumps out of his, uh, time state. So we're gonna use a lullaby. I th I'm really spacing out right now, so I'm not exactly thinking I'm selecting a lullaby. Okay, so he isn't affected by lullaby. Well, thank goodness we got water block, which I think goes away soon. Oh yeah, he doesn't really deal much. Super Blooper is actually a fairly difficult boss if you don't know what you're doing and you're not thinking uh, tactically. Because what these games are, it, it's a, these are role-playing games naturally, but remember that you can't just mess around in a strategy game. Because if you do, then you're going to mess up a lot. Well, hello. I guess I have to murder children now. Okay. Why not? What was the subject we were talking about again? Oh yeah, gun control. Uh, I don't know, I don't really like talking about these kinds of things because it's kind of a strange thing for me to be talking about, but as I said, it's a matter that we need to deal with. And naturally, gun control is one thing that people just continually get wrong. It's not about... It's... People are thinking about the things in the off chance, and what ticks me off the most is 
naturally people always blame video games for it, and one thing that they never notice is because they put out these very extreme, uh, ooh, they put out these very extreme, um, blames on video games, but they don't know the statistics yet. In case they haven't noticed, uh, crime rates have actually dropped since video games, since violent video games have been around, and that's a phenomenal thing to actually st state, because it's a thing that is currently in our, uh, society now. It's just something that we are used to now, I guess, is because of all this violence. But violent video games is the one thing that we can actually break away from, and this is Yoshi's Island. Right. Boo's Mansion is, uh, is a different area. Right, uh, this is a later section. Uh... It's not about, it's not about, you know... Because the one issue is, is we can't take away guns. Because if we take away guns, then what about that one crazy person that'll get a gun and then he'll eventually have to rule over? It's kind of a problem. We need to find a way to regulate things. We need to, you know, have a way to find a cause and effect and not put the blame on everything in place. Oh, right, these guys. If I remember anything from, um, if I remember anything from my, my original playthrough of this game, the one thing that always, uh, was problematic are these Dark Koopas. Uh, Dark Koopas have an ability where they can, can where they can make Mario dizzy, which makes him unable to move. These guys also get up in one turn instead of two turns, which makes hitting them harsh. They do have a very cool color scheme, though. I do like their scheme. But these guys are actually fairly difficult in large groups. Uh, if, if I'd recommend anything, I'd recommend using the wall of eye on these guys. It's a very useful item in these kinds of things. Anyways, back to our actual subject of the matter. Um, like, like I've said, you actually shouldn't... It shouldn't be about how you can regulate guns. I mean, it's just a thing that everyone deals with. I mean, I have guns. They're airsoft guns, but they're guns, right? I mean, to be technical, I can't do much with the weapons I have now. I mean, sure, I can probably fake some, fake some noises and such, but even then, that's not really a very big thing to do. And that's kind of the, and that's kind of the thing is, it has to be actual guns that are the problem, right? And yeah, that's the that's the problem. And I'm rambling because I had coffee. Um, it's not it's not the issue. It's not the point of the subject here. It's about what we do with uh, it's what we do with gun control. I guess we need to teach people how to use their guns properly, because there's a lot of gun-related incidents. And sure, some of them are actually accidents, but most accidents are caused for a, for a reason, an oversight. And if we're talking about just in terms of shootings, then we're talking about, you know, having to get these people actually, you know, get some, get them some help before they, you know, do these kind of kinds of things, you know, before they lose their minds and go on a crack shooting spree. And it's not about just a matter that it becomes an actual issue. It's already an issue. It's just that nobody's doing anything about it to solve the issue. And that's what's getting us in trouble a lot with the kinds of uh, problems. It's not about um, who did what and why they did it. It's more of they did this, and we need to find out why they did it, so we can find out other preventative things so it doesn't happen again. And that's kind of... It's kind of the reason why I listen to music sometimes, because sometimes music has a good symbol. And, uh, if anything, Stan SB has kind of reminded me of one thing. Uh, his song Flatfoot Face reminds me of, kind of, like today's society in the matter. It's about, um... It's, it's the story is about repetition and how if we all do the same thing that eventually we're gonna finish it off and still have the same product and eventually it's just gonna get old but the thing is is that it's true 
eventually we're going to stop worrying about this kind of thing. And that's what we need to not do. We need to actually worry about this kind of thing. And we need to find out multiple ways to solve the issue. Instead of coming up with one same way. Because, if anything, I've heard about five different things about, about this kind of matter. I've heard five different things that all could work, but they've been used as the main subjects. We need to look over these kinds of things in order for them to find a better and more simple solution. I mean, I've heard a lot about violent video games, violent movies, um, insanity, um, improper regulation of weaponry, and uh, what's the other one? I can't remember. It's like f four or five crazy things. And those are the main regulations. And yeah, some of them are true. I mean, I couldn't imagine... I could imagine violent video games kind of giving the wrong image to people, but still, I mean, it's it's a video game. People know right from wrong. You can't honestly go around telling society that they can't tell the difference between shooting actual people and shooting uh, people in a video game. I mean, that's kind of what's gotten Grand Theft Auto in trouble in the first place, and that's what's gotten Call of Duty in trouble in the first place. It's what's gotten a lot of games in trouble, and makes video games look like the bad thing, what prevents people from actually having entertainment issues. And the one thing I can never get over is the fact that people just don't seem to get it. It's, it's not the video games, it's the player that causes the issues. Anyways, here's another... Um, Here's another place. Uh, we have Hurricane, which blows all enemies out of the battle. We got Watt, which can, power, which can paralyze all enemies. Fire Shell. Uh, we're going to use Cooper's Fire Shell for this. Because Fire Shell seems like a very useful one. Also, um, as far as I know, there's three? There's three, um, there's three of these in this area. We got two of them already. One of them in an earlier episode, I think before Chapter 6. And, uh, I got 22 minutes, okay, so we can cover, so we can still cover some. Okay, I'm gonna use Le I'm gonna use Lecky Lester to get around faster. Okay, uh, let's see here. Use sushi. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just kind of tired of hearing a lot of blame over something. Sometimes it's not the mistakes of something, it's the mistakes of someone. And, to be honest, we need to stop spreading the blame like it's something's fault. There was, uh, there's one, there's one person I can think of that I honestly, I honestly don't think should ever handle a gun, and it's that one crazy guy that just went on a complete rage tangent, and just, and just shouted and went red in the face about this kind of thing, and that's, and that's not a good thing. I don't... There, there shouldn't be those kinds of people handling guns in the first place. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, people can go gun crazy. I mean, I fired a, I fired a rifle before and everything, and I enjoy firing rifles. But I don't think that, I don't think that we need to go on ten-minute tangents in. Sh we don't have to go on ten-minute shouting tangents, explaining why we love guns and why we should keep them. I mean, that's not exactly the image that we want to put into our future. We don't want to have a bunch of crazy people just go and wielding guns going, Wee hee! I mean, it's just... It's not the thing that we need to do. And, I mean, I'm not making people... I'm not making all the crazy gun toting people sound like hillbillies. I mean, there's... I, I, I think I know a couple of people that have this kind of... That that are, that enjoy having weaponry around. I mean, I know people that actually survive off of hunting and the outdoors. And that's fine. But I don't think it's right to have civilians in specific cities, including big cities in general, to have weaponry. Like, I, I can I can understand people owning weapons, but there are some cities where weaponry isn't exactly needed unless you're in a police force or something. And even then, there should be regulated there should be regulations in these kinds of things. It shouldn't just be something you hand to someone. And yeah, I mean it's uh, I mean it's a lot easier. It's a lot more complex than I'm making it sound, but in all honesty, that's what it's becoming. It's there are some people that just there are some people that let you try out guns instead of you know instead of actually you know uh, firing them. Like uh, they let you fire weapons, but you don't have to buy them. That's what I'm saying. Uh, there's a lot of the there's a lot to this place, and uh, we need we need one item in order to get there. And it's the Ultra Boots. You're, you're required to have the Ultra Boots if you want to get further in. 
and with our friend Lackey Lester we can get over these spikes. Because the two things that you can go over are spikes and lava. Take the hint of the last thing. I'm actually going to stop talking about gun control because it's just kind of an uncomfortable subject for me since it's kind of a strange subject to talk about during an LP of Paper Mario. So I'm just going to shut up and uh, keep playing it. And I'm going to run away from this fight. I don't really need the star point. I said star point because you don't really gain much star points from this. Whoa, hello, hello, graphic, hello, physics defying coin. Physics defying coin defies physics. It must be, it's a super coin. Super coin of superness. Okay. So as you see, it's really weird how they put the, how they put a block there, a stone block. There, of all things, a stone block, instead of, you know, a ultra block. The thing is, is that the more you run away, the less likely you are to actually get past and pass it again. And the Toad Town sewers are actually, is actually a very, very large place. It's, it's a fairly large dungeon to set it off as one. And as you see here, we get ourselves the Ultra Boots. The attack power of our of Mario's jump increases by one, which means that now we can do four damage with our all or nothing now. And on top of that, you can now do the tornado jump by pressing A again while in the air. So as you see here, we now have more improved jump with a height with a height uh, with a height increase, which is needed for some things, such as those blocks that we saw earlier. Okay, we're gonna just pass by these guys. Don't care about that stuff. Right later. I can't remember specifically if there are, like, life shrooms down here, but I don't think there are. Okay, this guy, I can never get past. <sighs> looks like we'll be able to get to, uh... Looks like we'll be able to get there. Uh, looks like we'll be able to get to Shiver City before the time... Before time's up to end the episode. That's good. Probably rest at an inn or something. Okay, go back up the pipe. And I think these guys respawn, I'm not sure. I guess we'll just avoid them anyways. Nope. We're good. Is it just me, or does Lackey Lesser kind of look like Elton John? Elton. <laughs> what is it like? Okay, if I remember, it's like here, then here then here, then here. There's another pipe down here that we can go down, which gives us more stuff. I think a super block as well. Oh no, it's, um, use Bombat here. And then you blow this open, and you have, uh, Rip Chido, which is, which I think, uh, yeah, Rip Chido and Chet Rippo are the same person, I think. And you get the odd key, and you can open this door here, which takes you back to this little warehouse in Toad Town, so it's a little shortcut. Anyways, let's go back down here. Uh, for, you can buy stuff from this guy for 64 coins. Kind of a helpful thing, I guess? You can get a few items from him, including a couple star pieces and I think a badge. Okay, I don't know why I pulled out Lucky Blaster, but oh well. Faster travel, I guess. And uh, I have to say that Chapter 7 is one of my favorite levels in the game, simply because I just love ice levels. In Mario games like this, like where there's no ice physics or anything, I just love the serenity of ice in, in like this game, because it's just beautiful looking. And I kind of wish that it was signified more in, in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Okay, so we're going to upgrade. We have, the, we have four more blocks to find. And I'm going to upgrade... I can't remember, I think there are actually 18 blocks. Uh, we're going to upgrade... Hmm. I'll upgrade Watt. Mega Shock seems helpful. Okay, Watt's upgraded to Ultra Rank, we'll pull up on bet. Okay, that's the pipe we went through. Now, let's go to Shiver City. 
In the next episode, we will cover Chapter 7, A Star Spirit on Ice. Until then, I'm Replay Ty Heretic, and I will see you guys in the next episode.